I am Pastor Jack Davidson from Redeemer Lutheran Church. Welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church's worship for May 24th, 2020. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in the stead, by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first reading for the ascension of our Lord is from Acts chapter 1. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he has chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. When he had said these things, they were looking on. He was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle from Ephesians chapter 1. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom, and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson for the ascension of our Lord from Luke chapter 24. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, 
I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you're clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continuing in the temple, blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. Third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for today, two passages, first from Acts chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, which reads, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, And he put all things under his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of Christ fellow redeemed. Christ is risen and ascended. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There are four major celebrations or festivals that we celebrate within the Christian church in the church year. You well know the names of three of them, Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. The fourth festival is the festival of the Ascension, the day that we celebrate today. It's the forgotten festival. It's the festival when we celebrate Jesus ascending into heaven, as we confess in the Apostles' Creed that he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. It's just as important to celebrate the festival of the ascension 40 days after Jesus rose from the grave on Easter, while the secular world will pay attention to the holidays of Christmas and Easter for different reasons than we Christians do, Ascension Day just doesn't get the publicity, not only outside of the Christian church, but within the Christian church as well. But the Ascension is no less important than these other major festivals that we mention, for it's the day that we celebrate when Jesus essentially accomplished his mission here on earth and now has taken his rightful place again in heaven. A helpful way to think about the Ascension is to liken it to a welcome home celebration in heaven for Jesus, where the angels rejoice as the king comes home triumphant, doing everything that's been needed to do for the salvation of sinners. The Ascension Day is essentially Jesus' victory day where he says, mission accomplished. We all know about celebrations of events that celebrate accomplishments in our lives. At the end of World War II, the people of America threw all sorts of parades as soldiers returned triumphantly home from battle. The parades were a form of saying, mission accomplished. The city of New York is well known for throwing a uni unique type of parade, a ticker tape parade. As the heroes pass through the city streets in open air vehicles, streamers, confetti, ticker tape fall from the buildings up above to celebrate the triumphant return, a way of saying mission accomplished. When Ohio State won the national championship a few years ago in football, the whole state celebrated, not with a parade, but with an open celebration at Ohio Stadium. The team goal had been met. 
a sense of mission accomplished. Families who have loved ones graduating from high school or college or graduate school this time of year will throw parties and celebrations all in a way of congratulating the graduate and saying, mission accomplished. Now our Heavenly Father sent Jesus, His only begotten Son, on a divine mission, a mission to save sinners. In love the Father saw sinners in their miserable state, in their lost state, mired in sin and separated from Him. For each and every one of us were born in transgression and sin. We were born alienated and enemies of God. We are by nature children of wrath. But God, who is rich in mercy, sent His Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. This mission to save the world meant that His Son would take on human flesh, just as we have human flesh. He was born of a virgin to keep the law perfectly in your place and in mine, in the place of every sinner. He would live as every human being would live, yet without sin. Jesus did nothing in his earthly life out of selfish ambition, but he humbled himself. He became obedient to the point of death, even dying on a cross. The one who knew no sin became sin for you and for me and for the entire world. He came to live in this world and to save the world, but the world he created and came to save rejected him. He was despised by men, forsaken by man, and also by his heavenly Father. Jesus was crucified on the cross, damned for the sins of every sinner, drinking from the cup of God's wrath. Jesus did all this because this was the mission of the Father, sending his Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. God's will is this, that all be saved and come to know the truth. And once Jesus accomplished his mission of living, of dying, of rising again, he gathered his disciples on a mount near Bethany, and there Jesus lifted up his hands and blessed them, saying, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up. And a cloud took him out of their sight. Jesus returned to heaven, to his rightful place at the right hand of the Father. Mission accomplished. At his ascension, the Father, in the words of the Apostle Paul, our other text for today, Ephesians chapter 1, put all things under his, that is Jesus' feet, and gave him as head over all things the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Now Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. But that doesn't mean that Jesus is in any way physically restricted. Even though we can't see Jesus physically, it doesn't mean that he's not with us. He's present. And it's because of his ascension that Jesus, as the true God and true man, uses his God powers now at all times for our benefit. Hence, when Jesus says that he is with you always, he is, because he's God, because he has ascended into heaven, and now he fills all things. He fills everything in every way. He's able to keep his promise to you of never leaving you nor forsaking you. So you can confidently say that the Lord is helper. You don't have to be, the Lord is your helper. You don't have to be afraid. He uses his power now as God's son to save you and to bless you. Jesus is present here and now. He says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. He's here as he speaks to you through his word. And in communion, he offers his very body and blood. He's really present in the sacrament, giving you himself in, with, and under the bread and wine 
for your forgiveness, your help, and salvation. Jesus is present with you today in his word and in his sacraments. And where those, that word and sacraments are administered, Jesus is there. Now that Jesus has accomplished the Father's mission of saving the world from sin, Satan, and death, he now calls upon you and me to participate in his mission of making disciples of all people. That's why Jesus told his disciples before he ascended into heaven, now all authority has been given to me. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you and know that I am with you always, even to the end of time. Jesus' mission has been accomplished, but now his mission of spreading the good news of Jesus has now become your mission and my mission, a mission to seek and save the lost, those who don't know Jesus and his love, and to share the good news that they are loved by God, that they are saved by God, that they are forgiven of God, and that God is with them to bless them through his word. As human beings, we'll spend a great deal of time and effort to try to find something that we've misplaced, that we've lost. Luann can tell you the countless times that I've lost my glasses or my iPhone or my iPad at the home that we live in. If you've ever driven around town, you uh, have undoubtedly seen signs placed on billboards or on telephone poles signs of pet owners trying to find help in finding their lost pets. God knows what it is to be lost because God, his son, had been forsaken, lost on the cross. But now God sends you out and he sends me out on a mission to seek and save the lost. Sadly, we won't and we haven't used the same effort to find the lost as we do in trying to find our own lost possessions. Our efforts in the past might have been lax because we've had a fear of rejection or maybe we've been at a loss for words. Perhaps we just haven't been attuned to the opportunities that God presents to us. But now in this present time that we live in, God gives us new opportunities to share the good news of Jesus Christ. God places people in our midst. He's placed people in your midst, in the midst of this pandemic, who are open to hearing God's good news of salvation. And they are in need of hearing that God loves them. People who are out of work and wondering how they're going to make it. People who are afraid of the present and of the future. People who can't forgive themselves for the past or live in guilt and shame of what they have done. God presents to you new and unique opportunities to witness to these people what God has done for them in Jesus Christ and the hope of what God can and does do in Jesus. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God has saved you because others have witnessed to you. Perhaps it's been a grandparent that brought you to church or Sunday school. Maybe your parents had you baptized and they faithfully attended church and brought you along so that you would know and love the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Maybe you've received a kind invitation from a stranger or an act of mercy from someone who just sought to show love to you. God places people now in your path so that you can pray with them, so that you can invite them to church, but most importantly, that you can listen to them and their needs and hear what concerns them the most, so that you can then present to them and share with them the hope that you have within you, that God loves you and God loves the sinner. God gives you a mission today to be a witness to others. The ascension proves that Jesus has accomplished his mission to be Savior of all. And our ascended Lord reminds us today 
that our mission now is to share the love of Jesus with all. For Jesus rules the world, and he rules his church in love, and even now, he loves you dearly. And you can know for certain that he who kept his promise still keeps his promises to you, and that he's with you always, even to the end of the age. To God be the glory. What great things he has done and what great things he continues to do in the name of Jesus, our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep both your hearts and minds through faith in the one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We bow our heads as we go to our Lord in prayer. Good and gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, on the divine mission to seek and save the lost, that he lived the perfect life, died the perfect death, he rose again from the grave, and now he has ascended and sits at your right hand, where he rules all creation, but also he rules his church, which is his body. We thank and praise you, O Lord, that you have sent your Holy Spirit, teaches us about Jesus. We pray, O Lord, that through your preached word this day, Many more people will come to a saving faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Open up doors and opportunities for us that we might participate in your mission of seeking and saving the lost. O Lord, go with us to prepare the way. Open doors that we might go boldly through, that we might share the good news of Jesus Christ and the hope that is within us, so that by your power and might, by the blessing of the Holy Spirit, your church will grow and that people will be blessed and saved. For we ask this in the name and for the sake of Jesus, our only Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you now and always. Amen. You've been watching worship service for Redeemer Lutheran Church in Lancaster, Ohio. We invite you to join us in worship Sunday mornings, if you have no church home, please make Redeemer your church home. May the Lord bless and keep you.